so you are you're fully cleared for for contact following your your ACL tear from last year. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And uh, then, man, how are you feeling? I know this has been, you know, it's never an easy recovery process from an injury like that, especially when you were playing so well. But, uh, you know, how is that knee feeling and how did it feel to finally put those pads back on? Yeah, I mean, obviously the knees, the knees feel great. Uh, able to go out there and perform and, and do my job right now. Um, in terms of being a football player, there's still a lot of rust that needs to be knocked off. You know, today marks the 330th day since I got to put football pads on. And uh, to go back out there today, and I, I mean, we've had this great acclimation period um, where I've been able to kind of test things out and have full speed practices without the pads on, but um, to, to gear all the way up, cleats to helmets and shoulder pads uh, and, and go out there and, and not just selfishly be able to go play football again, which obviously is my biggest passion, but um, to go and, and be with my teammates, with the guys that I love and the guys who, uh, you know, played such a great season last year, put on all this off-season work, as you know, to find a way to make sure that we're all in shape and, and, and put ourselves in position to, to make a stretch and a run here. Um, just to be back out there with those guys and, and be in the huddle and, and look around at all my brothers being out there playing with them again. Um, it's the same reason that brought me into the game when I was, you know, 11 years old is go out there and play football with my friends. And so to be out there and do that again is truly a blessing. Hey, Harrison, Sal Capaccio, WGR. Great to see you with shoulder pads on, man. Yeah, what's up, Sal? Good to see you, too. Hey, um, can you kind of talk us about talk to us about what it was like mentally for you over the last almost year? You know, um, I know you were emotional when the news came down, when you left the field that day in Cincinnati. Uh, you had a tough rehab. Um, I know you, you put a lot of passion into, you know, uh, being with your brothers and being out there and going to battle. What's that been like for you? You know, it honestly has been uh, uh, emotionally – I mean, one of the hardest things I've had to do, and, and maybe that means I've had a sheltered life or something, but uh, when you care about something this much and have it taken away from you, um, and, and again, it's, it's so much bigger than myself. It's not being able to, you know, last year we had such an amazing team and not being able to contribute. And who's to say we might not have won another game or two if I was able to play or make a longer stretch. And again, I'm not saying I'm a, a giant playmaker or anything like that. I'm just saying you think those things into existence sometime. And, um, and, and then it was over. And then the season was over and everyone went home and here I am in sunny January, Buffalo, uh, you know, by myself every day, uh, rehabbing and five, six hour days, working, sweating, crying, throwing up from, from how hard that, that I'm going. And, um, yeah, I mean, there was definitely some depression through there. There was definitely a lot of anxious, anxiousness, anxiety, uh, fear, um, I mean, there, there was, I remember having a conversation with a couple of the trainers, a, a very emotional phone call or a uh, uh, rehab day where I was sitting there like, what if I can't play again? Like, what if this doesn't get better? What if I don't get stronger? Um, and luckily, you know, some fantastic people here in the organization that, you know, kept believing in me and kept pushing me. And um, I'm an extremely motivated individual. And so uh, when you kind of get that great, um, just, I don't know, force going towards one common goal and, Every day I was chipping away at the rock, chipping away, and, and saw a light at the end of the tunnel, and it got me here. And like I said, 330 days since I got to play football with my friends again. Uh, and it, it's, it's truly indescribable how great of a feeling it is. Thanks, man. Glad you're in a better place. Thank you, Sal. Hey, Harrison, can you hear me okay? I've got to keep my mask on right now because I'm in a place where I can't socially distance. Yes, I got you good. Okay, cool. Leslie Frazier said he wants you guys to get after the quarterback a lot more this year, take the ball away more. Uh, the defensive line brought in quite a few new players. So what has it been like to get to work with guys like Vernon Butler, Quinn Jefferson, AJ Epinesa, Mario Addison, uh, as you're getting back into things, you know, 330 days uh, without putting pads on? What, what is it like to do that with some new guys by your side now too? Man, it, uh, it gets me so happy. Uh, we, we have some dogs on the defensive line. Honestly, we have some guys who come in this league and already proven themselves and have multiple sacks in the NFL. And then we have young, hungry guys who are still on the up and up and want to, you know, take their game to the next level, get double-digit sacks, make their Pro Bowls, you know, win a Super Bowl. And so, I mean, I look around the room and I, I keep telling all the guys, I mean, man, look at how many rushers we have. We have guys who can rush the passer. Um, and it's so great when you can throw a bunch of different groups together, you know, ends on the inside, inside guys on the outside, a big group, a small group, a joker group, all these different combinations 
uh, it's got to be hard for an offensive lineman. You know, in the past, sometimes we have a, a green group or, you know, some teams in the NFL will just have like, hey, these are their rushers. And so the offensive line will just have to study one player and then they get 60 plays against that player to learn them and block them. Well, if we've got seven different players that we could line up at the right three technique or the left defensive end or all these things, that's got to be hard for an offensive lineman to break that down and then, you know, bring a power rusher over him, bring somebody with a little bit of wiggle. Um, I truly am excited when we can start to game plan against, you know, Jets, Jets are coming up. Uh, when we can game plan against the offense, just throw all these different fantastic dogs we got in the D-line room. Yeah, with the way you guys are going to group things and the way you'll probably rotate so much this year with the amount of people that you have in that room, has it been a tough transition since, you know, you can't really rotate on Zoom meetings and practice that? You've been together now for a couple of weeks, so how has that transition been? It's been great, and, um, you know, more than anything, we got fantastic competition. We don't say that we have ones and twos. We have opportunity groups that go out there, and uh, everyone's going out there and trying to earn a spot on this team because we all know how special this team is going to be this season. And so um, it, it's, it's been great. Coach Washington and, and Coach Jacques have been doing a great job in rotating us and putting us in different groups and different positions. Um, and so uh, I think we all trust them that they're going to have us prepared for game one. Thanks, Harrison. Well, hey, Harrison, Mike, Catalana in Rochester. Um, yeah, I know you're coming back, and your excitement is obvious. But do you stand there on the field today and think, we got no preseason games, we're just putting on the pads, and it's, I think, 27 days until opening day. Does that seem close, far away? How does that opening day seem to you? <laughs> well, now, 27 days in training camp is about five years of real life. Um, but, uh, no, all jokes aside, uh, we all know what's on the horizon. And I think even more so a couple weeks ago when we were in that, like, phase two of OTA-like practices and walkthroughs, it was even more clear. Um, you know, I brought the guys up one day because we were making just a few small little mental errors that is totally normal for OTAs. And since that's the field, you know, we don't have pads on, we're just in tennis shoes or cleats, you know, it kind of feels like, oh, well, this is April 20th or this is March 5th or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, I brought him up afterwards and said, hey, guys, like, this is totally normal for three months ago. You know, we're, we, we got a game in a month and a half or whatever it is, and we really need to make sure that we're on top of all of our stuff. And I think um, collectively everyone has kind of made that jump, and Coach McDermott has done a fantastic job of illustrating, hey, this is how soon this happens. Um, I think – I might be mistaken, but I think yesterday or the day before um, – was our first preseason game last year. Uh, and obviously this is the first time we put pads on. So uh, you think you're a little bit behind the ball there, but as you know, the NFL PA and the NFL work together jointly to make sure that we are in the best uh, proper acclimation period for our health. And I think that that's obviously our number one priority. Unfortunately, the, the, the virus took away some of those preseason games, but um, this is definitely the best thing for all of our health. And um, we're at whatever date it is today, the 17th, I think, and there's really nobody banged up or too injured where um, uh, last year in training camp, we might have had five, six, seven, eight, nine guys out there in red jerseys just because of the, the bang period. So um, I think that we're definitely going to be ready. And, you know, Coach McDermott loves that physical toughness. And we're going to get that out in the next 20 some days. Thanks. Hey, Harrison, John Scott. Good to see you, man. Yeah, what's up, John? How are you? Good, good. It's great to actually be out there. Just uh, even though we didn't have the pads, I know it's nice to see real football again. I wanted to ask you about your expectations for this season for yourself. Yeah. You often hear when it comes to knee injuries, it takes more than a year, no matter how great the rehab went. How much do you put on your plate expectations-wise, knowing it hasn't even been a year since, since the injury? Yeah, you know, it's that's so hard just because today was the first day I got to play. Um, and I would like to, I would assume that then, you know, today is kind of the, the hopefully today is the worst a football player I'll be all year, right? If this is my, my lowest bar, I can only grow from here. Uh, you know, I don't want to make any vast, big judgments or anything, but, you know, the most important thing after coming off of something this traumatic is I, I want to be available the whole year. You know, I, I want to be available for every single snap of every single game. And I know that might seem like a, a low bar to set, but you guys know the injury rates in the NFL and, and, and my position specifically, the type of blows and bangs that, that happen in the trenches. Um, you know, number one goal is I want to make sure that I'm healthy for the entire year so that whatever position that they need to use me in, if it's one play a game or if I'm playing 100 snaps a game, that I could do that for the Buffalo Bills and help us win. 
Now, obviously, I've always in my life set far, long off, lofty goals. So, yes, ideally, I'd love to have to miss my first Pro Bowl because I'm getting ready for the Super Bowl. I think that's what every player should be saying right now. Um, but I, I think that the best answer is just that I want to make sure I'm available for every single game. Do you have to throttle back at all a little bit, saying, all right, I, 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 the rehab and I'm cleared, but I still have to ramp myself up because it, it's been so long and such a, a big injury? Yeah, uh, for sure. The, the medical staff and everyone uh, in our building knows the proper, I don't know, what load management, I think, is the, the proper term that they're using now. Uh, so they'll watch me. And um, more than anything, you know, the last few days I've been on the ground a little bit. And I remember this happening, you know, whatever, six years ago when I came back from a knee injury back in college. Those first couple of days, instead of planting on the leg really hard, you might just, hey, I'm just going to go to the ground and pop right back up. Uh, but even – uh, from Friday's first 100% uh, speed practice to today, I think I'm a completely different football player just in those three days. Uh, and I think that it's just going to continue to build and more and more trust. And I remember that first day, you know, Quentin Spain and Mitch Morris came and double teamed me and I planted on my leg and everything was strong. And I pushed them back, split the double team. I was like, wait a minute, you know, this thing is strong and uh, I, I'm a football player again. So those small little uh, things that just come, keep coming up. You know, yesterday there was a screen play that I was thrown on the ground, landed right on my knee, popped right back up, ran to the ball. Everything was good, no, no pain. And so just getting into those uh, situations more and more is just going to build my confidence so I can really go out there and play free. Thanks. Great to see you back. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Harrison, uh, Jay Skursky with the Buffalo News. Thanks for uh, taking some time today. Um, what does this defense lose with uh, Star opting out, and how do you guys go about replacing it? You know, uh, Star has proven himself in this league time and time again. Uh, fantastic uh, person to have in the room, fantastic football player. And so uh, I think you already saw some of the, uh, you know, the additions that we made in the room in the offseason. And, um, we were, you know, our, our depth of the D line has been fantastic. And so star opting out, um, we definitely appreciate everything that he's, you know, he has to go through for him and his family and the decision that, um, that he made, he's going to be tremendously missed. Um, but, you know, I think that the saying in the NFL is kind of the next man up mentality. And we have to have that from the top guy on the roster to the 53rd man on the roster or the 80th man on the roster right now. And, um, you know, our position coach, coach Washington, he, he's going to coach every single player the same. He's going to demand, everyone's absolute best, no matter who you are. And so uh, our rotation will help the, the loss of not having star, uh, as well as some of the leadership in the room, got younger guys stepping up. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it also helps us having some stud linebackers behind you to help pull off the double team. So uh, star is definitely going to be missed. Um, prayers, obviously, for him and his family's health. Uh, but we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're still solid up front. Thank you. Hey, Harrison, Jenna Cottrell out of Rochester. Um, What's up, Jenna? Glad to see you're doing well. Um, you know, when you were putting on the pads today, just what was what was going through your head? Honestly, I was, I mean, my heart was racing. I mean, it's like I drank a couple, couple, couple cups of coffee. Um, I just kept saying a lot of prayers, and um, I really just kept looking down. I was like, wow, what, this is really it. Like, no training rail, wheels, no like, hey, Harrison, come off on the side. We're going to do it at half speed or whatever. It's like, hey, nine on seven, you're up. Team run. Go get double teamed by some 300-pound men. Um, and, uh, I mean, again, it's just so much emotion that goes into it. Uh, but I, I looked at the pads, came out, took a knee, had a nice little prayer, and um, then kind of flipped the switch, and it, it was go time. When you think and you look around, what, what kind of potential do you think this defense has? Untapped. Honestly, the, the sky's the limit for this defense. Um, I can't remember exactly what we finished in last year. I think we're number two or number three in either yards or points or whatever it was. I mean, this is a fantastic defense. And then we brought in some new additions. So um, our, our standard is extremely high. And, uh, I mean, no one wants to settle for second best. So, uh, obviously, those are our goals. We have high aspirations. And we're all putting in the work right now. As you guys got to come out and finally see a practice, um, we really are working and trying to build this thing uh, from the ground up. Thank you. Good to see you. Hey, Harrison. Uh, thanks for doing this. I um, was wondering, what was it like going up against uh, guys like Brian Winters, Cody Ford today? What, I mean, what, what do they do well and what makes it challenging to go up against them? 
Uh, those two specifically? Sure, yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, number one, it's, it was great to see um, Cody back out there, um, you know, feeling strong and great. I think, you know, he was around this offseason doing a little bit of rehab stuff. So great to see him out there punching great, moving his feet well. And then the addition of, of Brian Winters, it, it was good. I see they've been rotating guys at guard, tackle, ones and twos, whatever they're kind of doing over there. Um, but I think they all know their playbook fantastically, and those are guys – that are, are physical up front and pride themselves in kind of having that, you, you know, you, you need that guy on the O-line that's gonna, not afraid to go hit somebody maybe after the whistle. Uh, and those guys seem like the guys that are going to stand up for their quarterback and, and do the right thing. So, uh, you know, iron sharp is iron. So the better those guys are, the better we are.